Will virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality replace screens as we know it? And should UX designers be considering this future technology in their process? At the August virtual conference, we held a Q&A session where Brandon from Melbourne asked about the future of AR, VR, MR, and UX. Jacob Nielsen shared his thoughts. Well, I don't think that they will replace screens. Uh, I mean, two-dimensional monitors, screens, and they can be bigger and bigger, uh, are very powerful ways of interacting with a lot of information. I mean, a lot of information is actually very well suited for two-dimensional display. I mean, text is one, uh, but a lot of other things as well. There's not very much data that's actually inherently exactly three dimensions. Some data is one or two dimensions, and some data is like many, many dimensions, like let's say a user experience design problem. Well, there are so many different angles and dimensions and issues we need to consider in user interface design that that's not a three-dimensional design problem. And the same is true for a lot of other knowledge work that it's really very multidimensional. And so showing in 3D rather than 2D doesn't necessarily buy you that much. Uh, there are some exceptions, obviously. There's some things are inherently 3D, like a lot of architecture, building type of things, a lot of medical problems as well, because the human body, you know, is 3D. So you've got to like plan surgery or something, that's an, a 3D problem. But not that many problems are like that. And it's also not, not just for knowledge work, it's also for a lot of entertainment applications. Some, yes, benefits from 3D, like, you know, like a shooting game or something like that uh, can be more, more, more engaging and, and immersive by 3D. A lot of other types of entertainment, I would say less so. Like think about something like, like a movie. Well, hypothetically, you could say, well, it could be 3D and you can kind of like walk around and look at the actors from all the different perspectives and angles and so forth. But in truth, that's just too much work and hassle. And it's almost always better to take the camera angle that a good cinematographer and director, they decided is the most suitable. And it should it be a close up or should it be like an establishing shot? Well, depending on you know, how the story flows, one or other is the better. And maybe from this angle gives you the better view of, of, of something. And maybe from this angle gives you a more exciting view of who exactly this is going on. And these guys are highly, you know, expert professionals, and they spend often years on making a film that you watch in two hours. And so enormous amount of thinking goes into planning these camera angles, and you get a better experience, which is what it's about, by actually abandoning the responsibility and watching a two-dimensional representation of this action rather than yourself try and move around the 3D representation of it. So I think for a lot, a lot of purposes, 2D and, and screens, not traditional screens, just bigger, higher resolution screens, a higher frame rate for the videos, all those things. There are definitely a lot of technical things that can be improved, but I do think that the inherent 2D is, is superior for a lot of things. Now, some things 3D is in fact better. Uh, we've been doing some, some user studies on um, AR, augmented reality, not the virtual reality with the helmets and all, but just augmented reality. And um, what we have found is that with the current uh, situation, there's a lot of, of interaction over it, interaction cost, which is kind of just extra hassle that the users have to go through in order to get what they want. For things like, let's say, a virtual campus tour if, if for a university, if you can't go on a physical uh, tour of the university right now, then you could get a virtual tour. That makes sense. But the overhead of manipulating that is often too much. And what we often find in, in, in these studies is that um, for sort of the initial experience, it might be easier for people to watch like a, a photo gallery or an, an edited movie, uh, a video of, of the environment. And then if they're very ex extra interested, then they can get more you know, additional information and additional engagement by, uh, by a, a, an actual uh, kind of simulated vir virtual tour where they can get the controls. But the interaction cost, it's really a cost benefit. This is true for all usability things. It's always cost benefit. How much hassle for the user compared to how much extra gain they get. And in the beginning where people are considering many, many things they want to look at, it's not worth the extra man uh, manipulation overhead of using the 3D interface or the, uh, uh, the AR uh, interface. It's much better to actually have the simplified interface and then reserve the fancy interaction for the fewer, smaller number of cases where people have an additional large level of commitment or interest. So that's that's kind of that's of course how it is now, and it's like that now 
because the uh, interaction techniques are fairly primitive and the users are not very accustomed to using them. So those are two problems that are holding us back. Now, if we think 10 years ahead, 20 years ahead, presumably we will have uh, better interaction techniques. You can actually see from video games, which is one of the domains where it does often work, Video games have been evolving, you know, and becoming better at these kind of complex manipulations. It's just not quite reached through to other domains yet. We can really learn from the, the gaming people. So that would be one level of, of advancement. And the other level would be a more user, uh, user kind of uh, experience with having done it in the past, therefore being able to do it again. Uh, but if you're talking about what you're going to design right now, which is what we are talking about, not what you might design in 10 years and 20 years, right now I would say be, be hesitant in using these tools. And what you would do as a professional in the field, I think it is something that will be growing because uh, these two things I mentioned will, will kind of become better. My prediction is it will be growing at a relatively slow rate. It's not going to be a big overwhelming thing that's going to take over very much. And therefore, I don't think it's worth your time, really, or investment to become super engaged in this unless you happen to be in one of those fields, like maybe video game design, where it's more important. It's worth monitoring. It's worth getting experience with. Uh, but I would particularly say it's worth studying people trying to do real things, not doing a demo. Sure, here, I see my virtual tour. Isn't it cool? And people say, oh, yes, that looks very sci-fi. But then if they're actually trying to look into... Uh, you know, I'm going to like buy a house. I'm going to look at 20 different houses to see which few ones are going to be on my shortlist. They may prefer to use a simpler technique, right? So you want to watch people do something real with the interface. And that's how you really judge whether it's actually worth the large amount of hassle to do it. And then, of course, also do usability studies. This is what I know we always say. But it's particularly true when you're doing something new where you have these impediments to usability. Then you really want to polish the, the UI. More, I mean, you always want to do it, but you want to do it even more so. Do really do user testing for this type of, in, of interface.